Brandywine. I am excited to be here with you guys. I'm excited to be here with my bookshelf. I have not been spending much time with my bookshelf because it is freezing cold in this room and it is snowing outside and it has been snowing off and on for a week. But I have been reading in my nice warm living room snuggled on the couch with my blanket. So this is the Magical Readathon wrap-up video. I tried to participate in the Magical Readathon that was done for Christmas. It was Christmas and Hogwarts. I got a little bit confused on the dates. So the readathon ran from December 17th, I believe, to December 23rd, but I got confused and I knew it had been extended. It was extended to December 26th for people that couldn't finish it by the 23rd, and my brain thought it was extended to the 30th. So I, it depends on, okay, so I, I completely failed at it, but I did better depending on what dates you go by. So if it was by the 23rd, then the only challenge that I completed was to complete my coursework, which was to read or finish whatever book you were currently reading. And the book that I was currently reading was Renegades by Marissa Meyer. I received this as a gift from my uh, Amazon wish list by another booktuber named Brianna. And I, I'm really glad she sent me this book. I had been wanting to read it, but I've been putting it off. One of the reasons I've been putting it off was because the sequel just came out and the sequel's in hardback and I wanted paperback. And I was worried that if I started the series that I would really, really want to finish the second book. And I was right because I read the first book and I loved it so much and I cannot read, wait to read the sequel. And I found out there's going to be a, a third one too, because it's a trilogy. Which makes me a little bit sad because I really wish there were like five or six books in this series, but I will take the three that I can get. This, it it's in paperback, so I was really glad she got me the paperback. And uh, it is a little dirty. My son's uh, milk bottle dripped on it, which made me really sad, but I'm planning on keeping this book anyway, so it will have those memories of having the milk on it. The book follows this girl here. Uh, she is Nightmare slash Insomnia slash Nova. Uh, Nova is her real name, and then Nightmare is her alt not alter ego, but her her villain alter. Oh, it's not called an alter ego, persona. Her villain persona, and then Insomnia is her hero persona, but really she's a, a like a double agent. Well, not a double agent. Yeah, double agent. So, uh, and then. The other main character is this guy here, who is Sentinel, and he, the story flips back and forth between their points of view, so like half of it's written from her point of view, half of it's written from his point of view, and it flips every chapter or so, which I absolutely loved, because the Renegades, as the name is, are the heroes that are in charge of the city, and basically, like, it had our normal government that we have right now, and then... This guy named Ace Anarchy rose up and overthrew the government because all the people that had superpowers, also known as prodigies, were being persecuted and killed because they were different and people were scared of them and so they would kill them. You know, we've all seen X-Men, we all know how that goes. And um, Ace Anarchy wasn't going to put up with it anymore. So he rose up and they overthrew the government and he was trying to establish a world where, like, anyone with powers could be free and wouldn't be persecuted. Things kind of went bad. Gangs took over. Things got really, really bad. He was in charge, I want to say for 20 or 30 years. And then he gets overthrown by the Renegades. And now it has been eight years since... So I think he was in charge for 20 years, and now it's been eight years since the Renegades took over. And the Renegades are in... Like, their office is this really huge, huge building. And the villains that still are around, there's, like, a few that survived when the Renegades took over, uh, including her, are not happy with how things are being run. They still want to get to that... Well, most some of them just want to get back to, you know, everybody being free. Um, she believes that the regular humans are becoming too p dependent on heroes, because heroes do everything for them, from big things to putting out fires to little things like hand handling graffiti that is on the wall. And so she believes that people are becoming too dependent on heroes, and it would be better if there were absolutely no prodigies. But since there are prodigies, 
it would be better if everybody was just free and normal people learned to support themselves and um, defend themselves and basically form like a government like we have now, but without prodigies being pr persecuted. And so she's trying to overthrow the renegades. Then on the other side is Sentinel, and I'm blanking on his regular name, but he, so she was the, she's the niece of Ace, Ace Anarchy. He is the adopted son of the two main guys that run the Renegades, uh, the two original superheroes that overthrew her uncle. And so while she's looking at the Renegades and seeing how horrible it is and like how, um, I don't want to say chauvinistic, but how like power, power hungry and, and like a, a self-absorbed and hero worshiped that these renegades are, he is on the other side and he sees the good that they're doing and that the people need them. And reading the book, I felt like it would be best if the world was kind of a combination of her two views. Like she has some really good ideas that would really improve like, the way things are going without having to overthrow everything, but she's determined to overthrow everything. But I loved that they showed both point of views, so we could see her side of it, and we could see the other side of it, and we could, like, really get a full picture. I loved the world that was created. Um, I'm not used to reading YA, so the whole romance factor was new to me, and I had to get over that, and sometimes I felt like some of the things that were said were really immature, and then I was like, wait a minute, wait a second, you know, remember when you were 16 years old, how you felt when a boy touched your hand, like, like, seriously, and then I'd be like, okay, okay, this makes sense, <laughs> so I'm just not used to the whole YA romance thing, but I, I loved this book, I loved getting to see the different superhero powers that she came up with, and the way that they were manifested, I loved the mystery through the whole book. They're trying to figure out who killed his mom. And um, I just, I I loved it. I loved how the world was built. I loved how things progressed. I loved all the details. I mentioned it in one of my posts to somebody else, I think on my Facebook page, but I could stay stuck in this world for like books upon books upon books. I loved the world that she built. I cannot wait to read the sequel. And then at the very end, in like the last, um, the last like few paragraphs, like this thing gets dropped and I was like, oh, and then this other thing gets dropped and I was like, oh, like, oh my gosh. So yeah, I, I need to read the second book, but I'm going to read until it's on paperback. And I don't know how I'm going to wait that long, but I'm going to try and wait until it's in paperback. But I really, really want to read it because it's awesome. I am really glad that I got to read this series. So that was the first book that was in for the challenge to finish my coursework. So I did finish this one, I'm pretty sure, by the 23rd. At the very least, I finished it by Christmas. Then the second challenge was, that I was going to do was to help Hagrid decorate the tree, the Christmas trees, and that was going to be to find a book that had a gold foil. And so for that, I had chosen Brother Band Chronicles, The Caldera. So... Uh, I totally missed the 26th deadline. I thought that the marathon didn't end until the 30th, and I finished reading this book on the 30th. So I don't know if it counts towards the readathon, but I am still really glad that I read this book. Um, this book is part of like a 21 book series that I love. I love all of the books in the series. And when I read, and it had been a while since I'd read one, they'd kind of like the last few books had been piling up on me. And when I read this book, it really reminded me of why I love this series so much. So the Brother Band Chronicles is the second series that he wrote in, like, the series is broken down to, like, four, yeah, into four, uh, like, different series within the whole world of, or the universe of this world. And the Brother Band Chronicles focuses specifically on a group of sailors from Scandia, which is basically Scandinavia. And... This is the seventh book in that series. And so it's been a few years since the first book started. The, the boys are all older now. They, I think they were like 15 or 16 when the book, the series started. I don't know how old they are now, but they're, they're young adult-ish, young adult, uh, like, like, I would say they're in their late teens, early 20s. I think late teens. And so I loved this book because it is a book about sailors like the whole thing is really really about sailing and even like to prove it there's a whole section at the beginning of the book that is just talking about different sailing sailing terms so that you know what they're talking about 
as he's giving orders. And the, um, you can, you can see what's going on. There's like a castle and there's a lagoon and swirling things and rocks shooting down. So it actually looks slightly different in, in the book from the picture, but basically volcanoes going off on an island. Basically a young emperor gets kidnapped and his bodyguard goes back to Scandia to hire a crew and that I don't want to give it away for anyone that hasn't read it yet, but he has a connection to the crew members. Let's just put it that way. And so he hires them to come back with him to help rescue this young emperor who's like 14 years old or something and take him back to his mom, who is the regent of, I couldn't pronounce it the whole time, Byzantos, I think, which is basically the Byz Byz Byzantine Empire. And, um, cause everything in like all the worlds, all the countries that they visit in the series are all based off of actual countries in our world, or I guess in the case of the Byzantine empire, like previous empires in our world. So I love that part. And so they, like, like I said, most of the book is the sailing terms, um, them, you know, tacking and ports and bow and all that stuff and uh, because they spend the whole book sailing and when they're not sailing they're eating so there was like six times in this book where they ate and i'm not like i gotta read you what these people ate because like this is like this is hardcore eating like i was so hungry after reading this book that i had to go and make a pot roast because i was like seriously this book okay so like the first time they ate they had spiced pork pie which was golden flaky pastry with pork mints, creamy mashed potatoes, green beans that had been slathered in butter, and then for dessert, a dish of mulberries and a jug of thick cream and coffee because everybody in the series is obsessed with coffee. Like, all the time, coffee. And then, later, they ate a um, smoking joint of beef that had been carved into slices on a wooden platter, potatoes and sweet potatoes, baked onions, green beans cooked with chunks of bacon, and crusty fresh loaves of bread. And then they had lamb skewers with green salad and then they had meat that had been grilled on skewers on a charcoal foil fire and then they had baked large snapper that had been baked in the fire coals and rubbed with olive oil and salt and the cavity had been stuffed with stuffed olives and slices of lemon and then they had one meal that didn't actually interest me because i'm like i don't like okay so i like fish and that's about it i'll eat shrimp sometimes but i don't I just, I can't, like, stomach, um, like, octopus and calamari. I tried lobster, and I didn't, I didn't care for it. I'm sure other people love it. Obviously, it's super popular, but I would rather have, like, mahi-mahi or something. So then the last meal that they had was two sizzling shallow iron balls set in a wooden platters with generous helping of baby squid, with the bodies separated from the tentacles and sliced into rings and then grilled on hot iron griddles set over charcoal, charcoal seasoned and the squid was seasoned with garlic, lemon juice, red flakes of chili and olive oil. And then they had a large green salad dressed with a sharp mixture of lemon juice and olive oil, fresh flatbread loaves and dessert was a sweet gelatinous substance colored pink with rose water and cut into small squares. Okay, so I really, really don't like the thought of tentacles or anything that has eyes, but I would totally dig the buttery, garlicky, lemon juice, olive oil mixture that it was in. So maybe if that mixture was like over mahi mahi, but yeah, so like they eat majorly in these books. And now I just want to read, like I already wanted to reread the entire series, but now I really want to reread the entire series and then just mark down everything that they've eaten in the series because I'm pretty sure one of the earlier books was what inspired me to start making my meat hand pies because he just talks about food all the time and it makes me want to eat he's really really good at that so don't read his books on an empty stomach but yeah so I thought that the readathon was going to end on the 30th so I finished that book by the 30th and then in the same day I also read the star of Dotora, shadows of the master meet the qualifications of the question that said that they were going to be going to the three broomsticks and it was to read a book that you could read within one evening and so i read this one the same evening of the 30th and so i thought that i had met at least three books of the five that i was supposed to read for the readathon 
And then I found out that it was supposed to end on the 26th and I was nowhere near. But I might have gotten one of the books done. But for Star of Tour, I did read it. My main complaint about the book was that it was so short. It is part of a series. I would really prefer that all of these books were just one book instead of being broken down into the series because it really just reads like the first chapter of a book. But that is not something that could take away from like the, the score of the book. Um, the only other thing that bothered me of the book, most of the time it like went around really smooth, but then every once in a while we'd hit something and it was like, that sounds like something I would write. And I don't like my writing. I like to read writing that is way more advanced than what I could write. And so that did bug me a little bit. But for the most part, I really like I really enjoyed it. I liked the storyline. It has a ton of potential. I cannot wait to read the rest of the series. So that is something I would tell you if you're going to read The Star of Del Toro, get the whole series at one time because just reading the one book, like if you're an adult, it's it's too short. It like it barely wets your whistle and then you have to finish it and then you don't have the rest of the books. If I had read it as a kid, I would probably have loved it even more because I wouldn't have all the other books I've read to compare it to, but also because it probably wouldn't have mind bothered me as much that it's so short. Uh, the adventure does end right when it's getting started, pretty much. So basically, she is the daughter of a merchant who was the merchant in charge of this awesome vessel right here. And then he found, I'm assuming it was that island, the island on the back cover. It might have been a different island. Is it showing? Somehow he found, or before he found an island, he found a staff that was a magical staff that kind of turned him bad, I guess. And then he got to that island and that island devours other islands and other ships. And he killed everybody on his ship and ditched his family. And so she's been living in shame and hiding who she is and who her father is for I think like the last five or eight years or something. And she's 16 years old now. And she's finally being given the opportunity to sail as a trader on that ship. And that is her dream. She's always wanted to be a trader. That It's in her blood. That's who she is. And so they are doing a contest because the, the country or the city or something that she's from, Del Tora, they have this huge trading fleet. And it's called the Rosalind Trading Fleet. And the Lady Rosalind, who's in charge of the fleet, is getting really, really old and she needs to hire an apprentice. And so she joins a competition to try and get that slot as that apprentice so she can become Lady Rosalind and be in charge of the fleet. So this book ends like right when it's going to be like the story's beginning. So I felt like a little disappointed that it ended that fast because I really want to find out what happens. And I am going to get around to reading the rest of the series, hopefully, eventually, someday. They are $5, $6 a book, but if I wait for the sale, I can get it for $5 a book. And luckily, I know where to buy these because, as I said, they're no longer in print. You can't find them in stores. So, yeah. I have mixed feelings about this book. I think online I gave it, like, a 3 out of 5 stars just because, like, honestly, I probably wouldn't finish the series if it wasn't for the fact that once I start a story, I have to have the end of the story. So basically, if I was the Sultan in 1001 Arabian Nights, I totally could relate to the fact that he needed to get the ending of all those stories. Because I just, I need to finish a story once I've started a story. So then, the next category, or the next question in the readathon that I was doing was to go down to the kitchen to give Doby a sock. And for that one, I was, uh, you had to read a book that had some item of clothing on it. So I had chosen Cinder. I can't really tell you much about this book because I am only 38 pages into it. Uh, so far, I am really enjoying it. This is also by Marissa Meyer, who's the same author of the Renegades video that I did, or the Renegades book that I read. And I, so I didn't notice. It's like super obvious, but I didn't notice it. Um, she's metal. <laughs> she's a cyborg. And even though... Like, it really, like, you can see the metal. I guess I just never really looked at it. I never thought about why her foot is transparent like that. But Cinderella is a cyborg. And it takes place in New Beijing, which is a futuristic world. I haven't figured out yet what happened to all the previous world. But they are, I believe it said they're the Eastern Kingdom. But yeah. 
But I love that it's in a new environment. I love the thought that Cinderella is a cyborg. I'm looking forward to reading the rest of the book. I'm looking forward to reading the rest of the series, which I think there are... I don't know. They show, like, a bunch. I know the first three are part of this series, the Lunar Chronicles. But I don't know about the last two. Oh, no, they are all part of the Lunar Chronicles. So there's at least, like, five more books after this one. So I, I'm loving it so far. I think it's really interesting. I think it's a really interesting concept, and I can't wait to finish the book. And so, yeah, I've been wanting to read that series for a while, too. But I will let you know more about it when I actually finish it. And then I actually lost the fifth book. It is somewhere here in my room, but I'm really bad about losing things. So I don't know where it is. But the fifth book was to sneak into the kitchen. No, the restricted section. To sneak into the restricted section. And so it was to read a banned book. And for that one, even though the readathon is over, I'm still planning on reading it. It's the Phantom Tobooth. It won't take me very long. It's pretty thin. And I will let you guys know how that book goes too after I finish it. So... That was my wrap-up for the Magical Readathon that I didn't complete, but I am still glad that I got to read the books. I cannot wait to read the sequels to all these books, I'll, except for The Phantom Tollbooth. I don't think that one has a sequel, but all the other ones have sequels, and I can't wait to read their sequels already. I will see you guys in a couple days. I will let you know if it's still snowing in a couple days. And don't forget to like this video if you want to hear more about the read readathon books that I've been doing or just any books in general that are book reviews and don't forget to subscribe so you can see whenever I post new videos I will see you guys soon and welcome to the new year